Hola, Paradise Panther artists. Me llamo Senora Telfer. I'm excited to be back with you today, learning about our next master artist, Frida Kahlo. She is a Mexican painter known for her many portraits, self-portraits, and works inspired by the nature and artifacts of Mexico. So come along with me as we explore Frida's native Mexican culture, her bright colors, and her mixture of realism and symbolism. Vamanos! Do you know where your grandparents or great-grandparents were born? Were they born in the United States or another country? Our master artist today is Frida Kahlo, and she has a fascinating heritage, just like all of you. Frida was born in Mexico in a small town outside of Mexico City. Have you ever seen a wedding photograph of your parents? Let's look at a wedding photograph of Frida's parents. Frida's mother was of native Mexican and Spanish parents. Her father came to Mexico from Germany. He spoke both German and Spanish. As was the custom in Mexico, her parents gave her a long name, Magdalena Carmen Frida Kahlo y Calderon. But she was always called Frida, which means peace in German, her father's native language. Frida's father was a professional photographer and took these pictures of Frida and her sisters. Frida had three sisters, but her father seems to have a special love for Frida. She was full of life and very smart. When Frida caught polio at the age of six, her father helped her to recover by helping her exercise and take part in sports activities. The polio left one leg weak and it never grew properly. Children today do not get polio because a medicine can prevent it. Frida started elementary school late because of the polio, but she did so well that she was able to attend the best high school in Mexico City. The school was a considerable distance from her home, so she had a long bus ride to and from there every day. She was one of only 35 girls among 2,000 boys. On her own, she started to study art history and she took some art classes. But then a terrible accident changed her life forever. Frida was 18 years old and riding in a bus on her way home from school when it was hit by a streetcar. She almost died from her injuries. She broke many bones in her body, including her spine. After several months of being in bed, she began to paint. She painted a memory from the bus accident years later. See if you can find Frida in this next portrait. We see many different people sitting on the bus, from a businessman with his money bag to a barefoot mother holding her baby wrapped in an orange rebozo or shawl. Do you see someone who might be Frida? Yes, it's the young girl on the far right. Have you ever had surgery? One operation is hard enough, but Frida went on to have at least 32 surgeries on her broken spine and right leg and foot. After some operations, she wore a plaster body cast and could not move her body for weeks. She spent many of her last years in a wheelchair, no longer able to walk, and wearing a tight leather corset to support her spine. What could she do in bed 
if she could only move her arms. Well, she decided to paint. Yes, she painted while lying down in bed. Her lifetime of paintings show the sad and joyful times of her life. When she was well enough, Frida began to show her paintings to other artists. One of these artists was Diego Rivera, a famous Mexican artist who liked her work. He also fell in love with Frida. They married when she was just 22 years old. Frida's father was not happy about the marriage. He said it was like an elephant marrying a dove. Why would he say that? Well, here is the wedding portrait that Frida painted of herself and Diego Rivera. Who is the elephant in this portrait? It is Diego. Why would her father say that? Well, he is much larger than Frida. And who is the dove in this portrait? It is Frida. And why would her father say that? Well, she looks like she is floating, just like the dove above her head. And her eyebrows are like wings. Also, she is much smaller than Diego. In this double portrait, we see her dressed in Mexican clothes, a red rebozo or shawl over a floor length tiered green dress and sandals. She wears a necklace of Mexican jade beads and her braided hair is woven with ribbons and pinned up in a native Mexican style. What is Diego Rivera wearing? He has a dark blue suit on with a shirt, a large belt, and brown shoes. Is Diego dressed very differently from Frida? See, yes he is. He holds his palette and brushes in his right hand while his left hand delicately supports Frida's hand. She portrays him as the artist and not herself. Why do you think that is? Well, she thought he was a better artist. Her husband was always encouraging her to paint because she didn't think she was good enough. Frida was very proud of her Mexican heritage and decorated their home with art, furniture, and ceramics from her country. She also wore only traditional Mexican dresses, shawls, and jewelry. Go ahead and point to where Frida has decorated the walls with their names and artwork. After her marriage to Diego, Frida traveled a lot in the United States and Europe. Diego Rivera was a famous mural painter who was in great demand. What is a mural? A mural is a painting done on a wall or a ceiling on the inside or outside of buildings. Frida and Diego lived for many months in San Francisco, New York, and Detroit while Diego worked on his murals. Frida walked the streets of these cities, proudly wearing her Mexican dress. Her beautiful clothing has been preserved and is on display in her home in Mexico. As time went on, her marriage to Diego Rivera became troubled. She began to paint more and more. More than half of her paintings were self-portraits that show the physical and emotional pain of her life. But she wasn't all alone because she had many unusual pets. Many times she painted herself with them. Try to guess what animal you will see with Frida in the next portrait. Do you have a pet monkey at home? See or no? I know I don't have a pet monkey, but in this portrait, 
Frida and her pet spider monkey are looking at us. A red ribbon, which she braided into her hair, falls in loops around her neck and over to the monkey. Why do you think she wound the ribbon around herself and the monkey? Well, it is a symbol of the connection between her and her monkey. The monkey is like her child, her companion. Can pets be companions? C. Do you feel less lonely if your pet is with you? C. And Frida did too. Which animal would you like to pet? The parrot or the monkey? Which texture would be the softest? Texture is how something feels or looks. In these paintings, we can only feel the texture of the fur and the feathers with our eyes. Frida used lots of little brush strokes to make it look realistic. Now feel the texture of your hair. Then feel the texture of your face. Are they different? C. Let's look more closely at these self portraits. Does Frida look happy? No. Go ahead and use your fingers to show me the shape of her unusual eyebrows. The shape of her eyebrows reminded her of a pet she liked. What animal could that be? Yes, it is a bird in flight. Frida was very proud of her artistic eyebrows. The background of these paintings is made up of jungle-like dark green leaves. For Frida, leaves were a symbol for life which was a constant struggle because of her poor health. You will see more leaves in the next portrait of Mariana Morillo, a friend's daughter. Did you expect to see so many leaves? They are even on the girl's dress and hair bow. Mariana is young and has her whole life ahead of her, so Frida painted a lot of leaves. Despite her lifelong struggle with poor health, Frida continued to paint. She taught art classes to children in Mexico City. She taught her students to be proud of their heritage. They studied, sang Mexican songs, and laughed together. Her students read about the history of art, and they went to the museum to sketch Mexican works of art. Do you think teaching brought Frida joy? See, yes, it did. Will there be a pet included in this next self-portrait? Let's find out. How is this self-portrait of Frida different? We can see that her hair hangs down and there are words at the bottom of the portrait that tell us Frida painted it with a reflection from a mirror. How do you think she is feeling? Well, she stares out at us with a mask-like determination. So we know Frida is still struggling with happiness and pain. Next, we're going to explore the home in which Frida lived most of her life. It is called Casa Azul. Do you know what that means in Spanish? It means blue house, and you might be surprised at just how blue it is. As you could see, the house was painted a very bright color of blue, but there are other bright colors as well. It looks just like the bright colors that Frida loved to wear. Today, the house is a museum in Mexico City, the capital of Mexico. It contains the paintings and collections of ceramics, toys, and art of Frida Kahlo. 
Let's meet Frida's favorite pet in her next painting. Sitting behind the fruit is her favorite parrot. His name was Bonito. Bonito means pretty in Spanish. Do you think Bonito might have enjoyed eating some of that fruit while sitting on the table? Yes, I do too. What do we call a painting of things that don't move, that sit still? They are called a still life. Frida spent the last years of her life having to lie in bed because of her spinal problems that began with the bus accident. She didn't want to paint self-portraits anymore because she looked so sick. So she began painting the colorful fruit of Mexico instead. A helper would arrange the fruit on a table and Frida would paint the still life while lying flat in her bed. Do you think it would be hard to paint that way? Yes, it was. See, when an artist arranges things together in a painting, we call that the composition. In a still life painting, the artist can create their own original composition by placing things however they want. Notice how Frida painted the fruit so that it's close together and overlapping. Do you recognize some of this tropical fruit that grows in Mexico? Let's see which ones appear in the next still life. What is the only kind of fruit you see in this still life? Yes, it is watermelons. But Frida made it look interesting by making them all different shapes and sizes. She liked to add writing to these paintings, just like she did in her self-portraits. Just eight days before her death in July of 1954, Frida Kahlo finished this last still life painting and painted the words, Viva la Vida, which mean hooray for life right on the watermelon. She was celebrating life. Sometimes Frida painted a small Mexican flag with its colors of red, green, and white stuck in the fruit with a toothpick. Frida died at the young age of 47, but left a collection of great paintings which express her love for her Mexican heritage. They also tell us about her unusual life. Today, she is considered to be one of the greatest painters from Mexico. Let's all celebrate Frida's life by saying together, Viva la Vida. Go ahead, try it with me. Viva la Vida. I hope you enjoyed exploring the life and artwork of Frida Kahlo today with me. You did very well, Paradise Panther artists. I will see you next time. Muy bueno y adios.